All right, so when we're looking at metrics that we're gonna measure with people, you have a couple of different things. A, subjective measurements are really important because how people feel is not only important to them, but it gives you feedback into the mindset of what, where they're at, right? So how are you sleeping, how are you feeling, and how are you pooping, and things like that. Um, but subjective measurements never override objective measurements. You still have to have some type of quantifiable data. So what we like to use is objective measurements that can be done with a using technology and something that clients can do at home and that they can do often without it being a pain in the ass. So when you look at things like running bloods, you have to have a lab, you need a doctor to interpret it and things like that. So that's not very practical. You can't get bloods done every day, right? So one of the easiest things that we like to use that really shows an insight in their health is blood pressure. Okay. So, when I show people this study, they tend to freak out. And the study says that 68% of all mortality risk uh, occurs with a systolic blood pressure between 120 and 140. Now, if you've seen the newest recommendations, the newest recommendations show that 120 over 80 is now labeled as prehypertension. And in a lot of cases, that's where a lot of people are sitting, if not higher. 130 and above is considered stage one and 140 and above is considered stage two. Now, this is incredibly important and the science is, is very conclusive on this. The higher your systolic, um, your systolic blood pressure is, the more cardiovascular risk and also metabolic syndrome risk you have. And I can tell you this, over the last about two years, I've taken my blood pressure cuff to every seminar that we give, and our seminars are for mainly for personal trainers and doctors to, to come in and, um, and learn about training and how to train for health and how to train for gym pop and, and fitness. And in the majority of the classes that we have, almost everyone in class are prehypertense, if not stage one and stage two, which blows my mind because we are the bastions of health and fitness. We're teaching this stuff. And in order to teach this stuff, you need to lead from the front. I remember a class we had in London. We had 60 coaches there and only three people were under 120 over 80. It was me and two other guys. And the other two guys are actually trained by muscle nerds. Everyone else had most, almost everybody had stage two hypertension. And I'm talking 140 to 210, which is completely ridiculous. And one thing that they found with this study is that the younger you are, if you're in that 120 to 140 or above, it is a pretty, pretty much a done deal that you're gonna have hypertension issues as you age. So the younger you are, you really wanna start focusing on it. If you're already in an older population, you really need to work on getting your blood pressure down. So when you train with a trainer, especially a muscle nurse trainer that knows about this, we look at two different things. We look at what do you want? What are your goals? If your goal is, maybe your goal is hypertrophy. I wanna put on five kilos of body weight. I wanna improve my deadlift 25 kilos. Maybe I wanna you know, run the fastest 400 meter I've ever run, whatever your goal is. Those are wants and desires. But you don't always get wants and desires up front. What we do is we give you what you need up front, which will then get you to your goal a lot faster. So if you come to train with us and you have high blood pressure, my number one priority is to get that blood pressure in a normal range. If you get it in normal range, you get to work harder and you can also last the workouts. I can give you more volume. I can give you more food. You're going to recover much better. So we really have to be on top of that and making sure that we're talking to our clients and educating our clients of why it's really important for them to keep their blood pressure in a normal range. And it's very easy to get it in normal range. The, the hardest buy-in that we have with a lot of clients, because we train a lot of coaches, is getting the buy-in that they need to improve their conditioning, whether that's metabolic conditioning and aerobic conditioning, because what we found is stress will destroy aerobic fitness if you're not managing it well. So the majority of people that come into us, they are not partitioning nutrients in the right channels, they're not making energy appropriately, and if you're not managing your energy flow, you're not going to recover well and your gains are going to be very short-lived. And in a lot of cases, the adaptation to your training could be adaptation the wrong direction or maladaptation. So starting at 115 over 75, this is what we consider the gold standard is 115 over 75. So if you want a range, we look at 100 to 115 systolic and about 60 to 75 on the diastolic. So the systolic is the higher number, the diastolic is the lower number. So if you're out of that range, whether it's high, if you're high, we are gonna give you more aerobic conditioning. We're also gonna look at your sodium potassium balance and your stress management. You're going to be doing more least mode activities. This means taking least mode seriously. 
it's not hard to get someone to come into the gym and beast themselves out. That's the easiest part. The hard part is convincing them that they need to do things that might not seem, you know, beast mode type things like journaling and meditation, having a hobby, maybe it's a float tank, getting a massage every week, taking time for themselves and things like that. If you look at the, the gold standard being 115 over 75, the research shows that every increment of 20 over 10 above that doubles your cardiovascular risk. And it's not uncommon for me to have even coaches come in with 155 over 85 or 90, or even up to 210 over 110. So keep in mind, every increment that you go over, if you're, if you are 135 over 80, you've now doubled your cardiovascular risk. If you're 135 over 85, now that's like a double double. So it's a double whammy. This stuff can be fixed within six to eight weeks if you're willing to do the right work, which sometimes means backing off the hard training, moving the emphasis of training away from heavy neural work like heavy lifts and lots of lactate work and hit intervals and all that, and putting the time in doing the steady state aerobic work, or aerobic intervals that everyone hates to do because it's boring and you gotta do a lot of it, and maybe you have to back off the really heavy weight training for a while and work on things like structural balance and eliminating weaknesses so that when you do go into that specific phase of training, going towards your goals, you're going to be in a better position to get much better results. Now, keep in mind too, that there's a high rate, a high return on your investment when you start doing this stuff. As you can see here, a reduction in systolic blood pressure of negative five correlates with a 7% reduction in mortality risk, okay? So that just for a little bit of work that you can do in about four to five weeks, you can massively increase your health massively increase your fitness, massively increase your gains, not only in hypertrophy, but also in strength, and massively reduce your risk of getting some type of metabolic issue or cardiovascular issue down the road. Okay, this chart is the new um, ranges that they've actually come up with. And the reason it's taken them a long time to readjust this is it typically takes 15 to 17 years for research to then start being put into practice. Okay, so they do a research study, Maybe it's published. It'll usually take about 15 to 17 years to be in practice, and it takes a good 25 to 30 years before they actually start teaching that in medical school. Okay, so a lot of the research that they did on this was in the early 2000s, so now 18 years later, it's now catching up with the industry. Okay, so again, the gold standard is 115 over 75. If we look at a range, 100 to 115 over 60 to 75. Now, what about if you have low blood pressure? If you have low blood pressure, we see this happening with a lot of really long-term chronic stress. We also see this a lot with women because in a lot of cases, you talk to a lot of women that don't really know about lifting weights and they, they've never really lifted weights. Their solution to keeping their weight down is starving themselves and doing a lot of cardiovascular work. Okay, they've already put in the time with the cardiovascular work. That's where their blood pressure is typically really low. What they need there are adaptations that will increase their blood pressure, which is why those people will not do a lot of metabolic work. Instead, we'll have them doing heavy strength training. Okay, so you only manage what you measure. If you don't measure this stuff, then you don't know what type of protocols to give people. So that's why it's super important, especially in a scheme of what am I going to do if I see these numbers? What am I going to do with my clients? If, I'm, if I am a client, why is my coach not teaching me about this stuff? Well, he probably has never been to a muscle nerds course. And typically, they don't teach this stuff when you get your Cert 3-4 or whatever certification agency you go to. It takes around four weeks to get the bulk of the cardiovascular respiratory changes. So if you can dedicate four weeks, you will see the big return on investment and then it maxes out at about six to eight weeks. So at about six to eight weeks, if you can just spend that time really hammering it, you don't really have to do it much anymore. The best number I can find also for your drop off when you stop doing aerobics, it's, it's about 2% a week. So if you do a nice big block, like November and December is usually my block where I do all my lease mode stuff. I already know I'm gonna be eating a lot because it's the holidays. I'm gonna be stressed out because it's the holidays. That's a perfect time to back off the weights a little bit or change the weights to something more metabolic, more muscular endurance, more strength endurance, maybe some um, low percentage hypertrophy work like German volume training or something like that where I'm lifting submaximal weights. I'm staying away from the heavy weights. I'm hammering my aerobic stuff. I know if I do that nice you know, seven or eight weeks between November and December, January 1st, I can go in a specific phase of training and start really hammering my strength and that'll carry me through basically almost to the end of the year. Another big component of this is lifestyle. And this is something that we don't, coaches don't normally, they know to do this, but they don't know how to program it, right? So 
you, you're programming training, you're programming conditioning. A lot of coaches will program the nutrition. There's also a high lifestyle component, right? So this is maybe you're doing some static stretching at home for stress relief. Maybe you're going on long walks for stress relief. You're doing some meditation for stress relief. Doing things that take your mind away from what you normally you know, think about, which most people only think about my bills, uh, my mortgage, my job, my career, you know, little Johnny smoking crack, he's eight years old. You know, you're thinking about stuff like that. You have to be able to counteract that with those lifestyle techniques. So that's something you should absolutely be programming into your client's programs because if you don't tell them to do it and you don't actually put it on paper and program it, they're less likely to do it. So just to recap, make sure you're taking your metrics because if you don't take your metrics, if you don't have quantifiable data, then you don't really know how to program and how to drive the program the right direction. And you, if you're not taking these measurements, you cannot manage the program effectively. And it's, you might maybe giving people things that are not creating a situation where they can actually get the chronic stress mitigated and handled so they can recover and get their blood pressure down.